extremely concerned. There are a lot of people who are very affected, and we don't know where it comes from. We don't know who designed it. All we know is that they're very good. Right. Hey, well, there's, there's some um, belief that it might have come from China. There's an article in CNET today suggesting that it might have come from China. No proof of that. No proof. What, there are a couple of interesting things about it. First of all, most of the computers affected are not in the United States. Less than 2% oh. of all the computers affected are in the U.S., according to some of the semantic I talked to yesterday. They're mostly in Russia, China, Argentina, and Brazil. Partly that's because they're using pirated versions of uh, Microsoft Windows. So that's what people suspect. Those don't auto-update as well, so they're not as well protected. Now, where did this person come from? I don't know. Maybe China, because that may have been where it started to spread first. Maybe the Ukraine. In the initial version, there was some very tantalizing code that said, don't affect any computers in the Ukraine. Now, that could have been a Ukrainian trying to protect his countrymen, or it could have been a Russian trying to put the blame on the Ukrainians, or it could have been a Brazilian. We don't know. Wow. The cyber world. <laughs> it's very interesting. theories abound. So what, do, what does this worm do, and what will it do? I mean, what does it do once inside the computer, and what might it do April 1st when it's set to either update or become active? Well, it'll probably just update on April 1st, so probably nothing will happen on April 1st. But at some point after April 1st, it could do whatever the people who control it want it to do. So my guess is that they'll use it to empty your bank account. They'll use it to turn your computer into a machine that will send out spam for them. They'll data mine your computer, get all of your information, and sell that information. So you really don't want this on your machine. Uh, so, I mean, we've, we have seen virus programs that get into your your mailbox and they take all of your address books and, and they send out emails to everybody in your address book. Right. You know, what What? What more could this one do than that? Uh, I mean, well, it, this idea of being able to get to your bank account is certainly troubling. Well, so what it can do is it can install what's called key logging software. Mm -hmm. And what that would do is it would record every keystroke you type in. So you go to your bank account, you go to chase.com, you type in your name and your password, it will record that. It will then dump that into a database. They will be able to mine the database, extract all the usernames and passwords. They will sell that to somebody, and whoever buys it is not going to do nice things with it. So how do you know if you've got it? Well, that's actually hard, but there's one cool way to do it. One thing that Configure does is it disables your access to antivirus sites. So go onto your computer right now, if you have Microsoft Windows, and check and see if you can get to semantic.com or mcafee.com or microsoft.com. And if you can, you don't have the virus. And, and what do you do if you find that you do have it? Well, then your first thing is you try to go to Microsoft and get something called the Malicious Software Downward Tool. And it will get rid of all of the malicious software. Type in Malicious Software and Microsoft. And it'll go and it'll give you software that'll help you get rid of it. Now, if you can't get to the Microsoft site to get that, you're going to have to get somebody else to download it and give you that file. Put it on a CD and then you upload it. To the but computer. the most important thing is make sure your antivirus software is up to date and active and constantly updating itself.